Hey guys, my name is Damas Rizli and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make endless looping videos. So if you're following me on Instagram, you probably know that I love to make endless videos like this. The reason why I love to make these videos is because one, they never end and it makes the viewer keep watching it forever and ever. Two, they grab the attention of the viewer much quicker and it's much more eye-catching. And three, because it's kind of like a still photo with a bit of motion in it, it makes it really intriguing for people to watch these on social media. There are lots of different ways to make your videos loop, but in this video I'm going to be focusing on two really easy ways to show you guys. I'm going to be showing you how to do these methods on Adobe Premiere, but they actually can be done on any video editing program as long as you know the technique on how to do them. So let's just start. Method number one. Method number one works best when the motion is more organic and predictable. So I find these work best when you're trying to make waves or clouds or waterfalls loop endlessly. And this method gives a really seamless transition so you won't be able to know when the loop actually happens. So let's get into Adobe Premiere and I'll show you how to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is to drop the video footage onto the timeline. I shot this at Lake Kawaguchi Ko near Mount Fuji in Japan by placing my camera on top of a small rock so it could get as low as possible. For these looping videos to work and have a bigger wow factor, you want to shoot them in a still position by either using a tripod or by resting a camera on a surface so it doesn't move. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is to change the orientation to portrait because we're going to be posting this onto Instagram. I find that portrait format works best for Instagram because it uses the most screen real estate and makes your post as big as possible for the viewer. I hit sequence and then sequence settings and then I change the editing mode to custom so I can change the frame size. The maximum ratio for Instagram is 4x5, so we're going to change the frame size to 1080 by 1350 If your video is at a high resolution, you can choose your own frame size as long as it's in 4x5 ratio. But 1080 by 1350 is probably the lowest I'd go. I also made the timeline 25 frames per second, just in case I want to slow down the speed of the video, as the original clip was shot at 50 frames per second. Next we're going to rotate the actual video. So click on the video track, and then in the rotation tool in the effect controls panel, I rotated it to 270 degrees, so the video is the right way up. Then we're going to scrub through the video clip and find the part we want to use. Look for the part where the video is completely still. Once you find the starting point, hit Ctrl Command K to cut the clip. Then delete the part before the cut line by hitting delete. Click the gap that's been left from the deleted video and hit backspace to move the clip to the start of the timeline automatically. Then keep scrubbing until you find the end point and then hit Ctrl Command K to cut the clip again. Then you want to delete the end of the clip. Next you want to work on the composition of the video by playing around in the effect controls tab. In this case I use the position tool to move the clip downwards to reveal more sky. If you want to you can also play with the scale and also move the clip left or right as well. Once you're happy with the composition we're going to trim the video again. I usually like my looping videos to range in between 8 to 20 seconds depending on the clip. In this case I've gone for a 10 second loop. You want to add a couple of seconds extra onto the clip and I'll show you why in a second. So in the time code, I typed in 1200 and cut the video at 12 seconds. So this is how we make the looping video. First, type 200 into the time code and cut the clip at the 2 second mark by hitting Ctrl or Command K. Then delete that first 2 seconds and move the clip to the beginning of the track as well as moving it up onto track V2. This makes the total length of the video 10 seconds long. Then you want to copy this clip by holding Alt, clicking the clip and dragging. Copy it to the end of the clip onto the track below, track V1. Then type 800 onto the time code, 8 seconds, and bring back that first 2 seconds that you chopped off onto the bottom clip by dragging the start of the clip onto the 8 second mark. Then you want to delete the remaining part of the clip that is past the 10 second mark. Next we're going to use the opacity tool to place a few keyframes onto the top clip. Place the first keyframe at the 8 second mark and make the opacity 100% and then place another keyframe at the 10 second mark and make the opacity 0%. This will make the top video fade out. However, because there is a layer of video on the track below, the top clip will fade out and show the bottom clip. And because the end of the bottom clip leads to the start of the top clip, this is what makes the looping effect. Make sure you have the loop playback button turned on so you can watch the video loop forever. If you can't find this, hit the plus button on the bottom right of the preview and drag the loop playback icon into the menu bar. And that's it, that's how you make a video loop seamlessly. You can also apply this same technique to audio as well. So let's give it a go. And here is what the audio sounds like before we do the looping effect.
I think it's pretty good already, but once we apply this method, it should loop much cleaner. I will speed this up a little bit because it's the same technique as how to loop the video. The only difference is that for audio, you need to keyframe the levels instead of the opacity. And you need to also keyframe the bottom track as well as the top. Keyframe the levels from negative infinity to zero for the bottom track. The reason we do this is because when audio gets stacked on top of one another, both sounds get played together. So by keyframing both audio tracks, they end up cancelling each other out. So now let's hear the audio that's been looped. I think it sounds much cleaner. Alright, so that's method one done, and here are a few examples of how I've used this method for other videos. And now let's move on to method two. Method number two is much easier than method number one. So the whole idea is to play the video forwards and then reverse it really quickly so it gets back to the starting point and that's where the loop happens. So I find this technique works better when the motion is less predictable and you know that when you overlay it on top, it's not gonna land in the same position. So when you're trying to make cars loop on a highway or maybe fish in an aquarium, that kind of stuff, method number one probably won't work for these sorts of videos. So let's jump into Adobe Premiere and I'll show you how to do this second method. So here I've got another clip from the same location which I've already cropped, rotated and framed. The aim here is to make the cherry blossom branches loop endlessly. As you can see, if you just leave the video as it is, the branches jump when the video loops back to the start. I also tried to use method 1 to make it loop, but as you can see, when the fade transition happens you can really tell that the leaves fade away and jump to a new location which makes the loop quite obvious and unnatural. So another way to make a video loop is just to play it forwards and then rewind it back to the beginning. Here is how you can do this. Because this is a 10 second loop, we're going to cut the video at the 5 second mark. Type in 500 at the timecode and hit controller command K to cut the clip. Then delete the back half of the video. I also deleted the audio tracks in this case because I didn't need it anymore. You'll see why later on. Next, duplicate the video clip by holding Alt, clicking and dragging to the end. Then, right click the newly copied clip and select speed slash duration. In the menu that appears, make sure you check the reverse speed box. You can also adjust the speed of the video too if you want by adjusting the speed percentage. In this case, because I wanted the movement of the leaves to be quite subtle, I'm going to leave the speed at 100%. Then hit OK. I then adjusted the composition further. Make sure if you do this, you also copy or apply the same settings to the other clip as well. And now we're done. If you play the video and watch it loop, you can see that the video loops naturally as the leaves just move back and forth. Here are a few examples of how I've used this method to make other videos. Bonus tutorial, combining method one and two. So now you've learned how to do both methods, you can get creative by combining both together. The first thing I did was to copy the two tracks from the second method into the first method timeline. Make sure you click on the blue box on the left of the V3 track and only that one is clicked. So when you paste the clip it lands in the V3 track. The reason why we deleted the audio from method 2 is because we're going to be using the audio from method 1. Next you want to adjust the composition and try to align the two Mount Fuji's so they are stacked on top of each other. To do this, change the opacity of the top track to 50% so you can see what's below and then adjust the position of the clip until you're happy with it. Again, make sure that if you change the position of one clip, you also change the position of the associated clips too. Then change the opacity of the top track back to 100%. Next, we're going to go to the effects panel and search for the crop effect. Drag the crop effect into the top track. Then you want to crop the bottom of the clip until it passes the water level. In this case, I've gone with 45%. The reason why I've adjusted the left option is because the original video has been rotated and so the bottom means left. You also want to adjust the edge feather so that the line of the crop becomes softer and less obvious. In this case, I've gone with 150 for the feather. And that's how you can combine the two methods together. The last step is to color grade the video. To do this, create a new adjustment layer and drag it to the top of the timeline. Then adjust the length so it covers the entire sequence. Next, click on this adjustment layer and open up the Lumetri color tab. Adjust the colors to the way you want it. 
This is very similar to color grading using Adobe Lightroom. My aim here was to make the colors pop out a bit more and increase the saturation of the video. You can also color grade the water part separately by adding another adjustment layer just above the bottom loop track. In this case, I wanted to make the water look more blue and make it stand out a bit more. Take your time when color grading so you can achieve the look you want. And now we're done. Hit file, export and media and I usually just export it to the default H.264 settings while also turning on the render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality settings. And here's the final result. Here are a few examples of how I've used this bonus tutorial to create some videos. Try this out for yourselves, have fun and get creative with it. Alright guys, so I hope you find those two techniques useful and you can apply them next time you're trying to make a looping video. If you have any questions about this tutorial or if you have any ideas for future tutorials, make sure you drop them in the comment below. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to see future tutorials just like this coming soon, make sure you hit the subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.